Dr. Meyer, we're glad that you're here. And today I want to begin with a clip from Illustra Media's beautiful documentary movie, Darwin's Dilemma, which asks, how could the complex animals in the Cambrian explosion suddenly come into existence? I want you to watch. How did these new animal body plans and fundamentally new forms of life come into existence? This was the mystery that Darwin set out to solve. But everything we've learned in biology over the last 50 years has brought this mystery back with a vengeance. How do you explain the origin of the Cambrian animals seemingly out of nowhere? This isn't just a problem of explaining the absence of evidence in the fossil record. It's also a problem of explaining everything we know about life right down to the level of molecules and cells. The biological structure of a Cambrian trilobite was as complex and sophisticated as a modern crab. Its organs included a brain, gut, heart, and compound eyes. Each organ was constructed from specific types of cells. Each cell type was made from dozens of specialized protein molecules. And each protein was assembled from a four-letter chemical code in a section of DNA called a gene. Now, for the evolutionary process to transform a simple Precambrian organism like a sponge with four or five cell types into a Cambrian trilobite with at least 10 times that many different types of cells, that's a huge leap in complexity. And to make that leap, you need a vast amount of new genetic information. Where does that information come from? That's the central mystery of the Cambrian explosion. According to neo-Darwinism, New proteins are constructed by the dual mechanisms of genetic mutations and natural selection. As the genetic instructions for building proteins are copied, an occasional error can alter their contents. If these accidental revisions prove beneficial to survival, they are selected or preserved and passed on to future generations. Over eons, these small changes accumulate, and new proteins, cell types, and even Cambrian carnivores gradually evolve into existence. Richard Dawkins, the famous Oxford evolutionary biologist, has illustrated how the Darwinian mechanism works using a metaphor he calls climbing Mount Improbable. From the front side, the mountain is a sheer cliff that could never be scaled in one giant leap. For Dawkins, this represents the impossibility of creating a complex animal by chance alone. Yet Dawkins also envisioned an alternative route up the backside of Mount Improbable, a long, gradually sloping trail of small steps leading all the way to the summit. According to Dawkins, that's how you'd climb the mountain. And that's also how you'd build a Cambrian animal, one small step at a time. What chance alone can not accomplish in one blind leap, natural selection can accomplish through the cumulative effect of many small incremental steps. In theory, each step corresponds to a small unit of biological change, a new gene and its protein product. But do mutations and natural selection have a reasonable chance of producing even one protein in the time available? Since 1992, molecular biologist Doug X has examined this question. There's a story that's being told, and there's a appeal in, in the case of Darwinism to random mutation and natural selection as being, in vague terms, the mechanism. But if you look at the detail, what kind of mutation can accomplish these transitions? And there, it's important to realize that the one area where we can really nail this down is at the single protein level, where you can actually measure it. And if you look at protein structures, to get a substantially new protein fold is prohibitively difficult. Mm -hmm. 